Alrighty, so I'd like to say that I had a fairly normal childhood. I had a dad, a mom, a brother, a sister, a cute little dachshund that most other people don't like, <laughs> and a, a nice suburban house. My childhood was so easy, so secure, that to be honest, I can't remember most of it. Most of my life has been a routine. Sunday, go to Sunday school. During the week, easy. We'd go to elementary school. Saturdays, we'd watch a cartoon or have an excursion to the museum or zoo. Life was really easy for me because nothing ever major went wrong. As I delved into this capstone and what it meant to be a good father, I soon realized that being a good father was really closely correlated with being a good Christian. Um, for my capstone speech, I mean, sorry, my capstone book, I read um, The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. And this book has been very influential in how I perceive fatherhood. As A.W. Tozer says, O oh God, I have tasted thy goodness, and it has both satisfied me and made me thirsty for more. I am painfully conscious of your need for further grace. I am ashamed of my lack of desire. O oh God, the triune God, I want to want thee. I long to be filled with longing, and I thirst to be made more thirsty still. Now this passage caught me off guard. I've been a Christian for most of my life and raised in the church, but I soon realized that I'd never truly thirsted for God. I never pursued Him with all of my heart, and I was ashamed. I never acted on this shame. I stayed in my comfort zone and tried being of this world instead of, of the kingdom. I realized that a father should pursue what is good because what is good reflects God's example, and that is the most important part of fatherhood. At the age of 13, my family and I moved to South Carolina. This was for my dad's work, and we only stayed there for six months. I did not like South Carolina. My mom did not like South Carolina. My dad did not like South Carolina. <laughs> and none of my uh, other family members did. So we decided to move back again after six months, and I thought, okay, everything's going back to the good old days. We're going back to my childhood roots, if you will. But I soon realized that this was not the case. I could feel a little bit of tension between my parents. And even though they were trying to hide it from me, I felt uneasy. My dad was my role model. He was the guy who took karate with me. He watched all my basketball games. He coached all my flag football games. He was there for me no matter what. And then all of a sudden, I didn't have this special bond with him. And I felt disconnected. That, that um, November, my parents got divorced. I had the absolute pleasure of interviewing Mr. Cooper. Um, while he is the head of school and a father to three very different children, he really emphasized the importance of Christianity with being a great father. When I asked him, what makes a great father, he said this. My first question has got to be, is this going to glorify my father in heaven? And if it is, then it's good and right, and I should keep doing it. Easier said than done, let me remind you. Um, yeah, I, I immediately was like, that makes sense. How come I can't do that? Why is this so hard to pursue? Um, and I soon realized that Mr. Cooper made a very good point of really fortifying your strength in the Lord and leaning upon him as being a father. It reminds me of this verse in Proverbs 3, uh, chapter 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. I've heard this verse a million times. I don't know about you guys. Many of you are probably raised in the church as well. And it has drained of all meaning to me. It's been desensitized to me. And I realized, after further investigating this and digesting this quote, that I was failing to pursue God. This idea of leaning upon the Lord to become a better man was completely alien to me. As I read more of um, A.W. Tozer, he described what taking up the cross and being a true Christian really entailed. It is never fun to die. To rip through the dear and tender stuff of which life is made can never be anything but deeply painful. Yet that is what the cross did to Jesus. Mr. Cooper, as well as A.W. Tozer, are making a very important point. You have to be all in. You either are a believer or you aren't. You either are a Christian or you're not. You either pursue him wholeheartedly, or you don't at all. There is no in-between. For my capstone, Mr. Spectre and Mr. Butler tasked us with having a few virtues that we wanted to get better at throughout the year. And I chose courage and discipline. And 
it's no secret that those are really important to me in terms of being able to pursue God and pursue truth. Without courage, I do not have the boldness to step out and procl- proclaim my love for God and p- pursue Him um, full-heartedly. And without discipline, I cannot make this choice every day. I need to pursue Him every single day. And that's the most important part I got through reading A.W. Tozer. Cooper also talked about balance um, with submission, submitting yourself to God and being selfless. He brought up the um, Jesus, the parable of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Mr. Cooper said this, He submitted himself, laid himself down. That kind of selflessness in the face of incredible consequence, that's our example. That's the standard in being a man of God and a father when these times come. I was really struck by the emphasis of the selflessness and submission to God. Throughout my life, oftentimes, whenever I had a difficult difficult period of life, I would push, push God aside, go through with my own resolve, and try making it, making it out on my own will. I realized that submitting to God, leaning on Him, was extremely important. I was only 15 when my parents divorced. 15 when my life was changed. I was left shattered as a young man, only a freshman as some of you are here. My relationship with my dad continued to get worse. And I tried put, putting the pieces together. Who left who? Whose fault was it? Was I to blame? I was confused and distraught. I began to spiral down into depression as I tried hiding my anxiety and, and thoughts from other people. I decided again not to lean upon the Lord, but to lean upon myself. I became angry. Angry at myself for doing this. Angry at my parents for splitting up. Angry at everyone, really. I didn't have anywhere to turn. I was lost. I began to doubt my dad's love for me and God's love for me. And this was a very dark time for me. And this was the beginning of my insomnia. Mr. Cooper defines courage as standing up for what is right. To stand firm in faith and submission to God. I also had the privilege of interviewing another man by the name of Daniel. Now, Daniel had a hard time growing up. Um, He was had trouble with the law and was incarcerated. But part of his story and his his, uh, redemption that he had was changing his life around for his daughter. Um, As he told his story, I was really impressed with the way he he changed his life through courage um, and humility once he saw his daughter. So this is him telling me his first experience holding his daughter while he was in jail. I held her, and at that moment, it was just like something came over me. It was just weird. I felt that connection at that moment. I said to myself, I will never abandon her. I will always be there for her. That's pretty awesome. Dan- Daniel gets it. Daniel understands prioritizing a kid, being selfless, being willing to change your life to help someone else. The word sacrifice came to mind the entire time when I was speaking with Daniel. His sudden transformation um, and change was really inspiring. He continued talking about how wonderful it was to be able to serve his daughter. I felt like I was fulfilling her. It was good because I wasn't just worried about what Daniel wants. Let's make Kaylin happy. Before, I was pretty selfish. I was worried only about me. At that moment, it was exciting to have her because my whole life was changed. She became everything to me. Daniel showed incredible courage, discipline, and humility while telling um, his story to me. I was really in awe of his virtue and character Um, and determination to change his previous path and go on a different path. Daniel prioritized his daughter, and that's something that's really admirable. I didn't trust my dad. I didn't know where to go. Being the oldest kid, I put the burden upon myself. I was going to be the one to tell my brother and sister, everything's going to be okay. I was the one who had the the false idea of courage, and being the oldest, I was going to stand firm. I was also the one who wanted to be there for my mom when she was having a hard time and had nowhere else to go. I was going to be the rock, but I wasn't leaning upon God, and that was a faulty rock. I became even more angry and isolated myself. I mustered up all the strength I could one afternoon. With my brother at my side, I decided to have a meeting with my dad. I told him that I would only be spent, I would cut down the hours with him. Up until this point, we'd been spending 50-50 custody with him, and I decided what was best for me, 
as well as for my brother, was to get out of that situation. And to this day, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. You know, your oldest son walks up to you and tells you that, yeah, I don't want to live with you anymore full time. And that's, that's something difficult and is one of the biggest reasons why I'm doing this capstone. During my capstone, I took two trips with two very important males in my life. First one was with my grandfather, my dad's dad. Um, he told me about the problems he had with his family growing up and was able to counsel me as a godly man. Um, and his virtue and wisdom is something that I can really admire. As I was talking with him, I began to question why I chose this capstone. Did I choose the importance of fatherhood because I didn't fully understand it? Or because it hurt me? or some entirely other reason. And because of this conversation with my grandfather, I began to understand that my capstone was a healing process for me. The capstone was a step, a timid stride towards redeeming my own brokenness, as well as my dad's brokenness. And I also began to realize that capstone was for others. Capstone was for every, every single person who has a broken family situation. It was for everyone at my speech, no matter where they were and what stage of life they were in. It was for all the dads and soon-to-be dads and will-be dads, everyone who can learn um, the value of what fatherhood means. The second trip I took was with my stepfather, Devin. Um, we did a rite of passage of sort. Um, it was a hiking trip, a one-day camping excur excursion. We did manly stuff, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, we set up a, a snare trap and stuff like that. And so it was really, it was, it was just a kind of fun little way to as a senior to really acknowledge how far I've come and how much further I have um, to do and how much greater I still yet have to achieve. Um, Devin and I talked about how prevalent father wounding was. Um, he has friends who have had father wounding and one in four children live without a father in the U.S. And that's a staggering statistic. And I soon realized that my capstone was restoration for me. It was restoration for my faith. It was restoration for my dad and for my family. I wanted to truly thirst and pursue God in this healing. Um, as I continued reading, I um, came across another passage about how Tozer talks um, about what being a disciple means. Believing then is directing the heart's attention to Jesus. It is lifting the mind to behold the Lamb of God and never ceasing that beholding for the rest of our lives. At first, this may be difficult, but it becomes easier as we look steadily at his wondrous person, quietly and without strain. Distractions may hinder, but once the heart is committed to him, after each brief excursion away from him, the attention will return again and rest upon him like a wandering bird coming back to its window. Now that is a beautiful image, to be a wandering bird caught up in the arms of Jesus and always returning. And that's something that excites me. I want to get to that place someday where I've pursued God to the utmost corners of my heart and soul, to where I truly am one with him. And I can find rest within his presence. I am unsure about what the future holds with my dad. And I am unsure how our relationship will change. But I pray for healing. I asked Mr. Cooper about the solution um, to problems with our fathers today. And he said, the solution is men coming into a redemptive relationship with Jesus Christ. Pouring themselves, pouring themselves deeply into the word, allowing it to speak to them in the way and who they should be. Through this, I learned leaning on God, I'll be okay. I'll make it through the situation and I'll restore which, what once was broken. And hopefully one day I'll be a good father as, long as, um, as well as being a good man. And while I don't know how that will change my relationship with my father, I know as long as I'm pursuing God, it will continue to improve. As Tozer said, he is transcendent above all his works, even while he is imminent within them. I'd like to um, close us by leading a prayer for every father and every child. To bow your heads with me. Dear God, we give thanks to the fathers in our lives. I pray that you open our eyes to the beauty in a father-child relationship. Lord, whatever our relationship with our dad looks like, whatever the circumstance, allow us to fix our gaze on you. Allow us to enjoy your presence and your love. Lord, I pray for every father. Give them the strength, wisdom, and courage to pursue you. 
Let them reflect your example. We pray for every child. I pray that they have a leader in their life that reflects you, Lord. And I pray that they're loved and cared for. But most importantly, they feel your love. I thank you for your unending grace and love. May we leave this place a better steward of your kingdom than we were before. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.